today, what the Lord is going to speak to us is simply extraordinary news to ordinary people. Extraordinary news to ordinary people. And we have read that Luke, chapter 2. We've read the 8th verse to the 20th verse. And we read about the shepherds. Ordinary people. Being given what? Extraordinary news. Before we continue, I will tell you, of course, some of us are aware of what I'm going to tell you now. We all know Prince George. The third in line to the British throne. Do we know him? That is the son of Prince William. Do we know him? Yes. Yeah. And Princess Catherine. I will tell you something about him before we continue. Twelve weeks prior to his birth, his mother had a very serious medical condition. They call the condition Hyperemesis gravidaro. You'll be wondering, what is the pastor saying? Hyperemesis gravidaro is very severe sickness for meeting during pregnancy. So 12 weeks before the birth of this child, Catherine had this problem. It was reported in the newspapers. She was admitted to the hospital, the little wing of St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington, London. So you can now imagine, 12 weeks before the birth, it was announced to the whole world that the mother of the third a land of the British throne, the mother was having this serious sickness. And the whole world was expecting this baby. When he was born, there was a commemorative uh, coins, commemorative coins, by the royal mint here in the United Kingdom by the Royal Canadian Mint in Canada, and also the Royal Australian Mint in Australia, just for him. So when he was born on the 32nd of July 2013, hundreds of reporters, in fact, they were waiting at the Linton Wing of St. Mary's Hospital. And they were there for three weeks. You can imagine. I don't know whether they took their bath or not, but they were there with their cameras. We were watching the whole thing here. For three weeks. That let's see when it is going to come out. So whatever happened with Catherine, the reporters, they were just bringing the whole out. And you know the midwife that was there when she wanted to deliver? The midwife was a professor. <laughs> You'll be wondering. A professor midwife standing beside her, Professor Jackie Duncan, director of midwifery of Imperial College in London. She was the one that took the delivery, a professor not ordinary midwife. They're the consultants, the best consultants in the country. Two of them, they were there. You know, this is a 
prince that was to come. There must be no mistake. Whether the Sampara message can fit that room or not, the prince must come out safe. So the whole world were waiting, were watching what was going to happen. So the baby was born. The announcement was made. You know, we have a, a town crier. In those days, in some other parts of the world, some countries, especially the villages, some people they will bring the on and be making announcement. That so 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 has bound the prince has been born, the next kick has been born, it happened here as well. They did it. And they put the announcement on the paper there, and they put it on the notice board at Buckingham Palace. So that the whole world will know the king, the third king, for this nation has been born. So the following day, the baby's name was announced as George Alexander Lewis. So the whole world was with him. He had seven godfathers. Then, every minute, there were 25,000 tweets. I don't know that I don't tweet. Twitters. <laughs> More than 25,000 every minute about this part that is going to happen. And 5% of the global news were related to that baby of the day he was born. The whole world, 5% of the news in the whole world, you can imagine. So, which means that every part of the world was aware that a king in the monarchy of the history of this country has been born. And let me tell you, it was discovered that on that day when he was born, 270,000 children were born on the same day, but who had their name? No. And in UK, 2,000 children were born on that day. What? Who knows their names? No one. So he got a 671 presents. Jesus got three. Obama couldn't call when he was born, and Obama came in April this year. I think you know about it. He came to visit Queen, and he said he had to pay a visit to George. Praise George. He got there around 7 p.m. in p.m. And President Obama met uh, Prince George in his uh, pajamas and a gown dress. Uh, they tried to shake each other's hand. So when Obama returned to America, he said that was not uh, a good protocol for him as the president and for Prince George to wear pajamas to welcome him. I mean, you can you cannot imagine. For the president of America, it will just come and say hello to Prince George. And he met Prince George in his pyjama because he was going to bed. And he hurriedly greeted him. So because that was the time for him to go to bed. So Obama said, ah, ah, this must be very serious. But that is out of the protocol, the government protocol, for someone to be welcoming American president with pyjamas. Can you see all this? But when the announcement, the extraordinary news of the birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lords, the Savior of the world, when it was to be announced, it was announced to ordinary people. Not any king in his palace. Not the priests in the temple. Not the movers and the shakers of the whole world. Not the worldly people. But to 
the ordinary people call the shepherds. Shepherds in those days, in the land of Israel, the only group of people in the social ladders where we classify people, according to the sociologists, the only group of people that, they, that, that were lured down the shepherds were the lepers. After the lepers, the next group of people are what? Shepherds. Before you talk about other people, in the social hierarchy. These people are smiling people. These people are, are, are vile people. Poor people. Unrecognized people. And let me tell you, it's been written in Israel, the Israelites, that when there is any issue in the court of law and the shepherds were to give any, uh, to testify or to bring any evidence, they don't accept their evidence. They don't trust them. This sort of group of people that the news, extraordinary news, were given to. What we be wondering? How can the king of glory, the one that is to redeem the whole world from our sins, could be born in this way and the message, the announcement being given to the shepherds? We will be wondering, why should God do this? Before we look at the first Corinthians, why God decided to do that? The Holy Spirit was telling me, supposing it was told to error immediately in his powers. And the angel said that, yes, Herod, the, the, the king of the whole world is born now. What will happen? Herod will quickly roam there. Of course, he tried that when even the wise men came to him, but he couldn't kill him. He would have gone straight and killed him. If the priests were told, they would say, who is that Lord of Lords? Who is the king? We are the priests. We are the world in the presence of the Most High God. Who is that one again? They would plot against him immediately. So the shop has been told. Let's look at the First Corinthians 1. First Corinthians 1, 26. From verse 26 to 28. This, I want us to read it together. This is the reason why God decided to use the shepherds to spread the burden of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you see your calling. We are shepherds. We are just like the shepherds. You are not. For you see your calling, brethren, how oh, that not many wise men after the flesh, not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world are things which are despised as God chosen. Yes. And things which are not, to bring to know things that are. So God has chosen those people that were not recognized. In order to confirm the wise, in order to confirm the princes, 
the kings. Those people that they call themselves the mighty people in the world, the shakers and movers of the world, then God did not disclose the path of our Lord Jesus Christ to them. He paid the shepherds. Ordinary people. So this announcement to the shepherd of the birth of Jesus Christ has got some truths that we will need to look at today. Are the lessons that we need to learn for making use of the shepherds for carrying the news to the old world. The shepherds, they went and met the shepherd of the soul, and their lives changed forever. Therefore, when we talk about the message of Christmas, this is the most important message. For Christmas, now and forever, until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. This is the most important message of all. There, what are those lessons from the shepherds? Verses 10 to 14. They had the announcement. We don't know what time it was when the angel came from heaven. We don't know what they were doing. Maybe they were having a campfire. Maybe they were asleep. Maybe they were drinking pepper soup. Or maybe they were singing shepherd songs. I don't know. We were not told what they were doing. But as soon as the angel appeared to them with the glory of the Lord shone around them, they were afraid. You can imagine the shepherds just enjoyed themselves doing whatever they like. And suddenly, an angel appeared with the glory of the Lord shone around them. In fact, if you go to the church of the, in, in the shepherd boat in Bethlehem, you will still see that glory of the Lord in that church. The shepherds would have opened their big eyes and say, hey, what is this? They would have opened their big eyes and say, ah, what have we done? They would have decided, are we to run away or to worship and bow before this heavenly being? And they just spoke to them about the bow of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then what happened? By the time the angel was to finish the message, the choir from heaven came down. And they started singing, glory to the Lord. And the highest. And there's a multitude of heavenly hosts. The Bible is not talking about hundreds, not fifty, not one thousand. It's a multitude of countable. You can see the heaven coming down to earth from the heavenly zone to earth zone to come and announce the power of our Savior. Who will not be afraid seeing such scenario? Who will not fear the King of Glory with that kind of experience? The shepherds were so afraid. The Bible said, so afraid that the fear was so terrible. They didn't know what to say. No. Verse 10 says, And he just said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you 
personal message, personal announcement that it is you that I brought this special announcement. So what the Lord is telling us that God is interested in individual, in you. In you. You might be wondering, will God know my problems, my issues, the issues I'm, I, I am facing? God knows about it. Because when the angel appeared to them, he said, it is you first. Fear not. Behold, I bring you. Good tidings. There are good tidings for someone here today in the name of Jesus. There are situations you are thinking that God, what is going to happen, God knows about it. He knows you. As the angel spoke to the shepherds, that this message I'm bringing to you first, to you. God knows about what you are going through. And that is why we say salvation is personal. Because it has to come to you first. Before the angel said this, bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Then it becomes global. It becomes all people. Everyone, black, white, green, whatever color, all over the world. That this joy has been brought to all of us. As a son of a God's people, that we are suffering. That is the only thing that we have to take note here. Savior of you, Savior of me, Savior of the whole world. That is the person that God has brought to us. God in human flesh. And therefore, all are the three names of uh, George. The angel declared to the shepherd about the next of this baby in a manger. First level. For to you is born this day in the city of David. A savior. Someone that is coming to save us from all our sins. Someone that has prepared to come and die for our sins so that we can be reconciled with our savior, with our God again. Which is Christ. Christ is Messiah. That all the prophets have been talking about the anointed one. That is the meaning of Christ, the anointed one. The one that all the priests, the one that all the prophecies have been written about, is this one that is coming to you. Christ the Lord. The Lord means the creator of heaven and earth. The word that uh, spoke and the heavens and the earth were created. The one who has the power and authority over everything on earth and in heaven. The one that controls the whole universe. This is the law that is being given to you. So what is that fear you are having, just like the shepherds? Well, on that glorious day, Savior, Christ, the Lord, was given to us. What is that fear? For God himself has come down in form of man. What a very great joy that should be in our heart. It is a grace, it is opportunity. Coming up from his glory, down to earth, as Lord himself, just to be like us in order to help us. So what is that fear? The scripture says that the shepherds were so afraid I no longer fear in you during this Christmas period. 
Fear about what you are going to eat. Fear about your career. Fear about the examination you have done, the coursework you have submitted. And what is that fear? The Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. There's a power of love and of sound mind. Because of the Savior and the Lord that has been given to us, I pray your fears will be converted to faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. All those fears will disappear from your life as from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Romans 10, 17. So then faith come by hearing. And by hearing, by hearing the word of God. The shepherd had the word. And that is another issue for us. Some of us, because of the situations we are going through, we always ask God, God, why can't you send angel to me? <laughs> like you send angel, like you sent angel to the shepherds. <laughs> God, why can't you speak in the cloud? as you used to speak to the children of Israel in the olden days. If you can do that, I will listen. I will just follow you. I will obey whatever you are going to tell me. Lord, send the angel to me like you sent to Mary. Then I will know that you are talking to me. Lord, send the angel to me like the angel you sent to Elizabeth. I will know that you are talking to me. Lord, you even appear. To Paul on his way to Damascus. Why can't you just appear to me? I will listen. I will follow you. Whatever you ask me to do about this issue, I will do it. Then God is speaking to us. You know that we need to be waiting for such kind of situation or environment to know that God is speaking to us about that situation before us. God speaks to us through his word. God is speaking to us through the situation we are even going through. God is speaking to us through our experiences in life. When something has happened, we say, Lord, I thank you. I can see your hand in this situation. You are the one that has done this. I pray that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will speak to you in a miraculous way that we know that this is the hand of God in your life. God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. Now we talk to our mind, our heart, gently. Or maybe we are listening to a message, or maybe even when the choir, when they are singing, then the Lord can be talking to us from all the songs they have sung this today. The Lord has been talking a lot to most of us. If you are following this song, in spirits, you will know that God has been talking to you. He has been talking to me. When you hear from the preacher, from the word of God, God is talking to you. So don't wait. Oh, the, the heavenly choir come. Ah, uh -uh, listen to it. The choir made them my brother Alex here. I don't know whether uh, uh, I want the heavenly choir to come because they came on that day to make the announcement. Uh, uh, the one you had this morning uh, is enough. Don't wait until that. We've had so many testimonies that when the evil the some ministrations are going on, healing has been taking place. Not only healing, a lot of things have been happening in our midst. So don't let us wait that God, I am waiting until you send the angel to me or until I hear from you directly. You see the problem with us, we are very preoccupied. We are always busy, always on the move. And most of the things we are doing, they are very important. Of course, as students, you have to go for lectures. You cannot say during the time of lectures you are going to be reading your Bible. How many of us are doing that? When lectures are going on, you'll be reading your Bibles. Eh? No. When you have to go to war, you're at war. You're at war. 
You have to work. You can't be reading the Bible. And please, don't go to work. Why have to be working there? You are reading Bible. No. I don't say they are persecuting you because you are a Christian. You were, you were reading your Bible. No. Do your work very far. Then there are some other things that we need to share the little bit so that we can be hearing from God. So that God can be talking to us. If we always wake up around 8 o'clock, why not start like 6 o'clock? Wake up 6 o'clock and just be reading the Bible first before you do other things, before 7 o'clock. I sent an email to someone and there was automatic reply. Do you know what the, the auto, automatic reply says? He said, please, if you don't hear from me, I only check my emails once in a day, and that is 1 p.m. So if you send me an email today after 1 p.m., I have to check it tomorrow, 1 p.m., and answer you just once in a day. But most of us, we check our emails every second. Twitter. Uh, what else again? Instagram. Eh? What's up? Face we, we check everything. Everything. No, why not you just stop that? Instead of doing that, I take the back. I believe the word of God. Let God speak to you. That is all what we are saying. If we watch news, we need to reduce it. And let's use some time to read the word of God. So I have a quiet time with the Lord. Lord, I want you to speak to me. We cannot be running up and down and when we have the time to, to have that Lord with the Lord, then we try to uh, be open another site. We have to be listening to the news. We have, no. Let's have You see, the issue we are talking about is your intention. If we say intentionally, I want to do this, we can do it. We have the time for recreation. Some of us, we have the time that we go to gym. Don't we have? <laughs> uh, we have the time we go for shopping. Don't we have? Aha! Uh -huh. Let us create time as well to hear from God. And not to be waiting until the angel comes, that the angel came to the shepherd. Before we can say, God, it is there, I will listen to you. I pray that the Lord will give us that grace to break time to hear from him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shepherd, not only listen to God, they took action immediately. And when we look at verses 13, 15 to 16, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, you can see the Bible is stating it, the angels that came, they go on the way to heaven because they came from heaven to come and make the announcement to the shepherd. The shepherd said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. You can see that statement very powerful. They responded to the announcement and that changed their lives for good. There are other options. There are other alternatives that would have taken place. What? They would have said, let us debate it. Let us talk about this thing. Let us analyze the whole thing. Do the angels came. The inquiry came. They told us to go to Bethlehem. Who are we going to leave the ship to? Supposing someone now has come to steal the ship, how are we going to be accountable for that? And in those days, if anything happened to the ship, they usually take from their wages to pay for that. They can say, oh no, this is not going to be possible. That, at times, that is what we say. Anything that is going to give us more responsibility for the things of God, we will find one reason or the other. The shepherds, they did not. They did not look for one reason or the other. They would have even rejected it and said, uh, we are doubting what these angels are saying. No! They would have 
have said, okay, and uh, finally, let us go and find out if it is true. He didn't say that. They said, let us go to the Bethlehem and go and see what we have been told by the angel from heaven, what the Lord has told us. Let us go there. That is why we say, come to the Lord. People will be giving one excuses of the other. But we have to take a stand and say, yes, I am going to worship my God. I know some brethren have given testimony say that whenever they want to give them job, they will tell them we don't work on Sundays. And that is it. We don't work on Sundays. The employers, they will respect that. That we have our God to serve. We move our shifts that are going to collide with the church services. We move them into other times so that we can have time with our God. So the shepherds, they responded very well. They didn't argue. They told themselves, let us go. What were we wondering? What is going to happen to the sheep? They didn't go. And you can imagine the first guests. They wrote their names in the guest book when they saw Jesus. They wrote a shepherd Abraham. Shepherd Moses, not the kings, not the powerful ones. They were the first one to have gone to see the Lord Jesus Christ, where he was laid. Very smelly people. You can imagine. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, and the Lord is taking all of us, if you are smelling some uh, shepherds and crew, when the rapture comes, and here you have to be thinking that uh, maybe those shepherds, were the shepherds that, uh, that angels spoke to about the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can get all sentimental things about Christmas, but if we have not allowed the Lord Jesus Christ to come to our heart like the, or like the shepherds did, they allowed, they went, they said, we are going to see him. Then, the meaning of Christmas is not the to us. We have to let the Lord Jesus Christ come into our lives. It has to do with change life and eternity. That's why we have in this second Corinthians 5, 7, 10. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new person. The old things have passed. We behold, all things have become new. We become new. When we are certain, and we go before him, and we know about John 3, 6, 7. For God so loved the world that the gift is only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. That is what we are saying. When we leave this earth, where are we going? That everlasting life is very, very important. That was what the shepherds must have been thinking. Eternal life and changed life. Their life changed. And I pray the Lord will change all those things that were not good in our life. To the best in Jesus' name. Amen. What have you done with Jesus? Jesus has been speaking to you. What have you done? That is the question we need to ask ourselves. You know what happened? Some of us, Jesus must have been talking to us, but we say, hey, What are my friends going to be saying about me when I become a real Christian, born again Christian? What are they going to be saying? How am I going to approach my former dear friends and my former pastor? What are they going to be saying now? <laughs> Those people that we used to uh, go out together, what are they going to say? Oh, what about my family members okay. that are not Christian? Someone has been praying for a member of the family to be born again. The Lord is hearing your prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is hearing your prayer. That is the only thing in your heart you have been asking God. And God, I want this person to give. So I like to Jesus Christ. God is said, He's answering the prayer to give for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We look at all these things. What may happen in my working places? That is why when Jesus is talking to us, the action we need to take is very important, especially during this Christmas period. 
I need to change. Maybe the Lord is telling us, forgive someone. Maybe the Lord is telling you, take action. Maybe the Lord is telling you, swallow that your pride and go and ask for help. Maybe the Lord is telling you, that I don't think that some people will know what you are going through. They cry out, tell people. Don't hide it. Maybe the Lord is telling you, you need to help someone. And you, need, you know that God has been telling you, help this person, help this person. But you are sitting there, not helping the person. Go out, take action, help that person. And see what the Lord is going to do for you. So God speaks to us. But most of the time, we don't want to obey the Lord because we know that, oh, this is very difficult. I change from this, change from this, change from this. Oh, Lord, please help me. Like one a, a church, the elders went to the general officer and they said, oh, Sir, when it comes to more than one wife, don't talk about it because in our culture, we marry more than one wife. And you can imagine. So the general said that in the scripture, is there anything like more than one wife? God has spoken to them, but they don't want to hear it. So if God has been telling you something, do it. Take a bold step that, Lord, I'm, going to, I'm not going to do this thing again. You have been warning me. Lord, you have been asking me to do this thing. I'm going to do it. And as you do that, the Lord will continue to move your life forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's follow the example of the shepherd and just go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then finally, he celebrated with joy. And uh, when they are saying, verse 17, and uh, when they are saying in, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. Verse 20, and the shepherds returned, glorified and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. We know that Nehemiah 8, the joy of the Lord is mine, is my strength. No one can meet the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord will change and be giving glory to the Lord. The shepherd, the man, the Lord Jesus Christ, who told you that those shepherds were not even having some problems while they were glorifying the name of the Lord? But they knew there was hope because Jesus Christ is the hope of the whole world. Because they put their trust in Him, there was nothing else they could do but to be glorifying the name of the Lord, rejoicing, blessing the Lord. They had the announcement. They went and saw him. And they can't keep this thing unto themselves. They have to become evangelists. The first evangelist in the New Testament era were the shepherds. And that is why we are saying we need to evangelize. Let's go out and talk to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. They started telling everybody oh, abroad. The scripture say abroad. So not only in that area. Uh, we don't know whether they were using phone then or they were using uh, Twitter or whatever then. They were sending the message all over the world. Now look at what is happening. Something has happened here. And those people that they told in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, they started going there to see the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great change in their lives. The change came from their heart know the physical things that were going on around them. The prejudice, the stigma of being shepherds is still there with them. But they don't bother because the joy of the Lord is in their heart. Because they have to proclaim the name of the Lord to the dying world. Because they have to tell the world that this is what the Lord has, God has done for us. He has given us that precious baby we have been waiting for. That king of kings, the Lord of lords, we have been waiting for. The savior of the world, the Christ Messiah, the one that has strengthened the heavens and the earth. Here is him. Can you also go to him? Don't let us hide 
the joy of the Lord inside of us. Don't let us just come here, oh, I say, oh, this is what the Lord has done for me. Let's tell others outside. This is what the Lord can do for you. Just come and see. And I pray as we talk about the word of God, as we spread the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the whole world, the angels in heaven will be commanded to be spreading our names for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we met God, everything changed for the better. How about us? Life will become hard at times. We might want to go away at times. There was one thing that the shepherd holding on to. Oh! They were trusting the Lord that whatever is going to happen, we trust him. He will help us out. And that was why they were praising and glorifying the name of the Lord. It comes out from their heart. It was swelling from their heart to the whole world. I know that the joy of the Lord inside you will continue to be spread into the whole world in Jesus' name. Amen. And let me tell you, the hope that is very important for us is that it's coming back very soon. The Savior is coming back. We are in the period of grace. And this is the opportunity that we've been waiting for. He is coming very, very soon. And when he comes, he's coming for you. He's coming for me. He's coming for shepherds. He's coming for wise men. He's coming even for kings. He's coming for ordinary people. And on that day, the voice that we say, I do not know you, will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. When he comes, we shall be rapturable with him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then, all the pains will have gone. There will be no more tears. There will be no more cry. There will be no more LA, LA, LA duty. There will be no more a death again. And then we will now say, at the end, it was worth it. And I pray the Lord will strengthen you Amen. to the end in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Christian race, we are running. We will not run it in vain in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that eternal life we are looking up unto. The Lord will make us to inherit that eternal life in the name of Jesus. Shall we not stop?